start out, God, in your house, God, I pray that you just bless us, God, in a special way that this morning, God, give us just a good time in your house, liberty, freedom. Lord, uh, uh, just, in, just enjoy the things and the places that you've given to us. I pray for others, Lord, that uh, Lord, that's out that's not here, Lord, that could be here, Lord, I pray that you just, uh, just bother them, Lord, uh, not let them have no peace and rest, God, to realize, Lord, they need to have their children, their family in church. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done, though. We're not driving, Lord, but just mindful of those that's, that's just careless, Lord, of their loved ones. I pray that you be with us now this singing. Help us today in everything in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> And 
What about a promise ring? You remember them little promise rings? They still give those out? Now, or that'll give an engagement ring. I don't know. A promise ring and then an engagement ring and, and uh, then divorce. <laughs> <laughs> well, half the marriages end up in divorce. But anyway, uh, uh, that's not part of the message. Just, maybe it's just time to get my thoughts together. Uh, everyone loves gifts. A promise. Hey, I promise I'll give you something for your birthday. Oh, I'll give you, oh man. Hey, everyone likes a promise of a job. How about that? Everybody likes to work well. And these days and time, half the people don't like to work because they're sitting on the couch drawing food stamps of welfare. Amen. Now, if they, if they can't have it, amen, that's good. I'm glad we got a government. Uh, let, let, let them get on politics. Hey, I'm talking about a promise. I still like what the governor of Maine says. Get off the couch and get a job. Well, I can't find a job. Well, go to picking up cans. Amen. The Bible says if you don't take care of your family, your work, your, your, your household, you're worse than an infidel. And we got change, all right. Hear it? <coughs> and so a promise. Let me give you the definition of a promise. A promise is the dec is a declaration that one, and in this case, let's say God, is a declaration that God will do or refrain from doing something specified. So, standing on the promises of God this morning, now the first promise that I found in God's Word came out of Genesis. Huh. Genesis chapter 2, 16. You can turn there if you want to, but I'll just give it to you right quick. Bible said of the tree of the of, of the garden uh, that thou mayest eat it freely. But then in verse 17 it says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, the first promise in the Bible was connected with man's obedience to God. And uh uh, uh, upon this promise, he said that you can have everything, everything you want. It's a perfect environment. Perfect peace. I mean, uh, everything was perfect. Uh, uh, you can have anything, just don't take of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. And you know, this first promise should have made believers out of everybody that ever lived, but it still had not taken the right for a People still don't believe God. They still just say, well, God's an easy, God's a loving God. Yes, He is. God's a loving God. God is a just God. And He <coughs> promised Eve, He promised Adam and Eve what would happen, and He stood by the promise, did He not? So listen, if God says it, it don't matter if we believe it or not, let's just obey God. Let's stand on God's Word, amen. Let's stand uh, on the promises of, of God. Now, Romans 6.23 said the wages of sin is death. This is a promise. And it began with Adam and Eve. And from that time forward, uh, uh, death uh, has come upon every man except, amen, one. And who is that man? Enoch. He was so close to God that God said, come on up here. He walked with God. Now that's a great exception. And Elijah, didn't he? Elijah got caught up on the whirlwind. Amen. But anyway, uh, we, we see that the wages of, of sin is death. Now, a saved person can get out and go to acting like a fool. They're going to pay for those wages. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad, amen, that if we'll hold on to the promises of God, that He will bless us and He will... Help us, amen. And if we'll stand uh, on the fast, on the profession of our faith without wavering, amen. We need to be like the wagon wheel. We don't need to wobble on the axle. But we all do. You know why? Because we're sinners. And so, uh, because we do wobble on the axle, amen, we've got a God uh, that will come to our aid if we'll rush back to Him. That's what he's there for. That's a promise. A promise from God. I'll get this mic situated in a minute. I'm a little too loud. I'm bringing it. Lord, Lord, trying to situate it. So, the wages of sin is death. Uh, 
In other words, the wicked shall be turned into hell. That's a promise in Psalms 9.17. The wicked without God shall be turned into hell. But the wicked with God, amen, God's going to carry on home to him and say, come on son, you can't get head down here. I'll come up here while well, you say, you believe in eternal security? I sure do. Because God said our name was written down in the Lamb Book of Life from before the foundation of the world. And if He erased my name out of the Lamb Book of Life, guess what? God made a mistake. And God never made a mistake. Sure, I believe in eternal security. I believe, let me put it like this. I believe in Holy Ghost conviction, eternal security. Now, not everyone that cries, Lord, Lord, shall be saved. Because you can get in an accident. Have you ever been in a bad wreck? Oh, God, help me. Lord, don't let me die and go to hell. You wasn't worried about salvation. You was worried about not dying. You was worried about dying. God builds a, a, a love of life in us so much that, that we, that everybody loves to live. Animals love to live. You go ahead and try to uh, uh, swatter the fly, see what happens. <laughs> he goes. You go ahead and try to sneak up on a deer. You deer slayers, amen. I ain't got nothing wrong with that. I'm just not good at it. And see what happens. If you're not good, you ain't going, why? Because he loves life. And so, uh, 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 not everyone that says, Lord, help me, or Lord, save me, has, under, is saved because they did it for selfish reasons. Everyone that cries, Lord, Lord, under the conviction of the Holy Ghost because he realizes that they're sinners. Brother Bob, if you'll turn this mic off, I believe I'm getting some echo out of it. Everyone that, that cries, Lord, Lord, uh, under the conviction of the Holy Ghost because he said you're a sinner and you're dying and going to hell. Listen, amen, you have eternal life. Thank God. Amen. amen. Thank God for eternal life. Then if we act little, if, if, we, if we wobble on the axles, which there's not a person that's ever not wobbled on the axles, if that's good English. Why do you say, preacher? Because the Bible said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I haven't sinned all week. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> you just lied, amen. You've lusted, you've hated, you've had a bad word, you've had a bad thought. Amen. You, if you said you're not a sinner, you just sinned because you just lied. According to the Word of God, that's a promise. Isn't it amazing how many goody two shoes we got walking around? Say, oh, look at me. Yeah, but look at me when nobody's looking. That's when you got to look at me. Mm -hmm. A promise from God, amen, that the wicked shall be delivered into hell and all nations that forget God. I'm thinking the good to the gooder part, amen, to the good. Ain't that good English? Amen. Gooder. <laughs> And all nations that forget God. Now, our first president, amen, was an avid Bible reader. He was a Christian man, George Washington, amen. He didn't even lie when he chopped down the cherry tree. Well, he did, but he got right, amen. <laughs> I forget the story. I've been, I've been out of grammar schools too long. Some of you teachers have to help me about the cherry tree knocking down. Hey, amen! All of our presidents, the founder, our forefathers, amen, they read the Bible. They stood upon the promises of God. Our nation prom, uh, prospered, amen, because they stood on the promises of God. Oh, but all of a sudden, 1962 or 3, I believe it was, or 61, whatever it was, they took prayer out of the schools. They took the Bible out of the schools, amen, and they replaced it with the comic books, and they replaced it with the filthy magazines. You can bring your X-rated movies to the school, just don't bring him to, uh, just don't bring your Bible, amen. But you know what? Students can still bring your Bible to school. Ain't nothing they can do about it. Teachers just can't read it or, or take over command. The best I understand, uh, Robert Gibbs, amen, or Bob or the Gibbs. Was, amen. It's, students can still have rights in school. I like that. The problem is they just don't take advantage of the rights in school because they're in a minority. You know what we need to do? We need to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he, he is faithful that promised. Promises. Promises. Now, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but I like this conjunction right here. But the gift of God is eternal life. Hey, God's always good. God's always a just God. God's going to stand upon His promises. 
If you go ahead and be disobedient to Him, yes, sir, I'll tell you what, He's a God that cannot lie. He's a perfect God, amen. And but, So I'm glad He put the positive side of Romans 6, 23, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then He gives us an example how to get there. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <coughs> did God die on Calvary? God's Son did. God so loved the world that gave His only begotten Son. Oh yes, these three are one, but they're one or three. And you'll understand that better by and by, amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the greatest promise ever. So let's look at some of these encouraging promises. Amen. The Bible said, the blessed uh, shall prosper if we stand on God's Word. If we're true to God, He'll be true to us. This is some promises that we can stand on. We are blessed. You ever heard somebody say, how you doing today? You'll, every once in a while you'll hear somebody say blessed. Amen. If you're living, you're blessed. If you've got a, if you've got a roof over your head, you're blessed. Matter of fact, if you don't have a roof over your head, you're blessed. Because God gives man the capability of putting one there. Amen. And it's all through God. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, chapter uh, 1. Let's turn over and look at that right quick if you want to. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 8. I've hit on this a little in the past few months, but I want to read some things right here how God said that we have some blessed promises in Deuteronomy 28, verse number 1. The Bible said, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and observe and to do all His commandments, <laughs> which I have commanded thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high from all above all nations of the earth. Now I know he was talking to Israel right here, but can I tell you what? He did the same thing to the, amen, to the great United States of America. Even until now, we are one of the greatest nations in the world. Why? Because God uh, 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 blessed us uh, uh, and, and recognize the principles that our nation was founded on by our forefathers. Oh, but the president we have now, oh yes, he, he, he'll cut out uh, 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 the National Day of Prayer. Amen? Did he not this year? Did away with the National Day of Prayer? Mm -hmm. And he's turning his back on Israel. Not your little pointed heads up, Danny. You know what I'm talking You've been listening to Fox News. If you don't listen to Fox News, you turn your television off. Amen? Because NBC, ABC, all these liberal stations, they don't give you what you want to hear. Fox News is just about as wicked, though. But anyway, uh, <laughs> at least they'll give you something. I'm glad that God has blessed America up until today because America is standing with Israel. <coughs> you let if, if President, if if Obama gets elected again, he, you, we're gonna really see some things that's gonna happen in the United States. And we, we'll probably see Him totally reject Israel and then God's going to pull what blessings that, that we have on America away from us and He's going to tell them what's going to happen. November is one of the most, and we've been here this for years, November is one of the most important elections we'll ever have in our lifetime. We need to pray for God, amen, for mercy. We need to pray God to help us. And so it says here, uh, uh, all these blessings, verse number 2, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Boy, ain't it be good to be overtaken by blessings? Woo! <laughs> Son, I've been overtaken by a, a few things, but I'd a lot rather be overtaken by a blessing. You know what that means, Junior? You can't outrun God's blessings. Overtaken. My. How about that? Being overtaken by God's blessings. How? By staying on Him. By standing on His promises. Believing that He can do and will do what He said He would do. Amen. And be, Boy, I'm telling you, we need to be... Uh, America at one time was overtaken by blessings. But America slowly but gradually is losing their blessings on God because we've turned our backs on God. He said in verse number 2, shall... 
and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. See that big another conjunction if? See the first conjunction we, we look at, but the gift of God is eternal life. Here it says, if thou shalt, I don't know if that's a conjunction or not, I'm out of high school children. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You know what that means? There's two voices running rampant in America today. Voice of God, which is the most important, and then there's the voice of Satan, the old devil, that's trying to, amen, that's running to and fro, trying to just trip us up, throw hurdles in our lives, where we'll fall flat on our face. I'm talking about Christians fall flat on their face, and then the world make a mock at them, mock it, make a mock at God through Christians. And that's where we're at today, folks. Better not get on that subject, amen. Something just run across my mind. It might run across it again. If it does, I'm going to let it rip, amen. I'm just going to go ahead and say, we got so much nakedness running across the Christian world today. I mean, all you see is naked here, naked there, here naked, there naked, everywhere naked, naked, amen. You think that pleases God? Old MacDonald didn't have that problem. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. When the neckline and the hemline comes together, and that's about the way it is today, I don't know what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. That ain't part of the message. I'm talking about standing on the promises of God. Well, I, do, I will give you one promise right there. The Bible says, uh, if you cause a man to commit to, to lust after you because of nakedness or a woman, amen. It's got to where these men uh, help. They walk around here with their muscle shirts on and their their half of their caves are showing, you know, they'll walk around town and hairy legs and, and it's got to where the women go. <laughs> so if you call a person, the Bible says a man, but let's say He's talking about gender, human. So I'm all over myself. <laughs> if you cause a person to, to, to lust after you, you the same as committed adultery in your own heart. You have come to commit adultery. Or hardly commit adultery. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the swimming pool to see it. Go to Walmart. That's a promise that we need to stand on. That is a promise. I know this ain't popular preaching, but it makes somebody needs to say something about it. Amen. amen. That's a promise. That's a, so many promises in God. Amen. So many declarations you'll never. I mean, it's just they just everywhere. Amen. And then it says right here, if thou wilt hearken, verse number three, blessed shall thou be in the city. Woo. <laughs> remember, remember, remember looking at this the other day. And blessed shall thou be in the field. I don't care if you're a city slicker. I don't care if you're a country bumpkin. Amen. If you follow God, His promises is that you will be blessed. And we need to stand on the promises. I'm a country dude. I like the country. You go to these big cities and, and, and around Dallas. We was coming through Dallas the other day. Fort Worth. I mean, house. I believe they leave 28 inches. Now, I'm just making this up. You know, they, the smallest little lawnmowers you get is about, what, 26 inch cut? They'll make a, a, a hurricane fence, 26 inches, so they get a lawnmower. Well, matter of fact, they got weed eaters now. They ain't got room for them. Then they got another house. Then a fence, then a house, and a fence, and a house. Hey, man, they've taken over the, the fields of there in Dallas and Fort Worth. And the big city, they're just, I, but some people love that. Because all they got to do is. Go next door and there's any kind of shopping they want. Blessed shall you be in the city. City slickers can be blessed. Amen. Blessed shall you be in the field. Then it goes on a little farther. Blessed shall thou be in the fruit of the body. The Bible says in other words, blessed is he that had this quiver full. And it's not talking about... Uh, I'm trying to think of something in Geronimo. Huh? It talked about their quiver full. I mean, a house full of kids. Amen. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of the body. 
And uh, uh, for this, the song says this is a father. But I'm glad it said, and blessed shall the man, the fruit of the ground, and of the cattle, uh, and of the your, your flocks of sheep. You know what? If you you know what he said right here, if you live for God, God's going to bless you beyond all measure. You just go ahead and live for God. That's a promise right now. Blessed shall you be. Blessed. Wherever you go, you're going to be blessed if you'll follow God, if you'll live for God, if you'll keep His statutes, if you'll do His commandments. Amen. Just stay on God. Yes, sir. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Amen. And stand upon God. Man, this whole, whole chapter, it says, uh, 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 well, we'll leave off from, from reading there. Uh, just blessed. Blessed and blessed. It says in verse, let me read this one more. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. Well, I don't think very many people have any storehouses today. I mean, you may have a hay barn with ten or nine rows of hay. <laughs> like the cause you all say, man, ten or nine bales. Blessings shall you be in your storehouses. You know what that said? That means monetarily right there. Monetarily, whether it's hay or whether, hey, most of us, man, I mean, isn't it, isn't it good when you when you get up at age and your children leave the nest and you begin to have a little nest egg? Woo! Yes. The big shot calls it a portfolio. I'm trying to figure what a word the folio, what portfolio came into me. Somebody said, man, one of these days my ship's going to come in. Well, you know my ship came in one time and I was at the train depot of all places. Have you ever been there? Always at the wrong time at the right place. Or the right... Galatians chapter 3 verse 9 anyway. <laughs> they which be of faith are blessed. Listen, if you've got God, you're blessed. I don't care if you've got a an automobile or you don't have one, you're blessed. If you're saved, you're rich beyond compare. Listen, a bomb on the streets of New Orleans, uh, if, if he hadn't managed right and, and sinned and, and done things, if he's saved, uh, amen, he's blessed. If you don't have nothing and you have God, you've got everything. You know the whole world's trying to get, 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 get. And you know what the Bible says? If you be faithful, He'll give, 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 give. But sometimes people are stupid. And God has to take, 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 take. Why? Because we're not faithful, 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 faithful. And so God's going to take. It ain't nothing if God can give. He truly can He take and take. Ooh. So if you've lost everything and you still have God, amen, you've got it all. Woo! I'm talking about you got it all. <laughs> because these little old brick houses we live in today, they're going to get burned up. God said He's going to make a new heaven and He's going to make a new earth. All these fine automobiles, amen, Cadillacs, Rolls Royces, all these big shop cars, amen, all your old antique automobiles that you try to hoard up. Hey, somebody don't say amen right. Hey, listen, all this stuff's going to be more hoarded up. It's going to be burned up. Uh, woo. But you know what's good? God gives you little things here alone, don't you? Uh, every one of us got probably got property we don't use. We got things. Every one of us has got stuff. Stuffed in the closets, stuffed in the bathrooms. I mean, you got to make a trail. To, just, to even get to the bathroom, we got to make a trail. Get, we got so much stuff. That's good, ain't good, Jim? That's good to have stuff. Amen. Woo! Stuff here, stuff there. <coughs> Told the wife, she didn't get rid of some stuff. About once a year, I catch her own. About to pick up load, leaves my house. Amen. Kind like yours, probably. But I get the stuff that she don't ever use so she don't ever know it. <laughs> blessed, amen. Blessed beyond measure. You know why? Because he's God. Amen. And so, 
uh, uh, Jeremiah 21, I mean, Jeremiah 12, 1 says, uh, but the uh, the way of the wicked prosper. You know, everybody says, well, look, you know how many rich people are there. I mean, the, the, you know they're not saved because of the way they act. Well, the Bible said the wicked do prosper. Let me read this to you. It, it says in Jeremiah 12, 1, the way of the wicked prosper. But in parentheses, they're not, they're not blessed through God. They're blessed through self-gain. I want you to notice here, the way of the wicked prosper. But it didn't say they were saved. It says they only prosper. And it stops right there. Do you know what the promise of God is? If we'll do God's will, not only do we prosper, but we have all things that we'll ever... One of these days, I mean, whenever all this prosper things are going, we've got still got God. The wicked, they don't they they lose their, their wealth, they lose their health, and they lose eternal life. And they gain eternal death. Damnation in the hell if they hey listen, if they're not called you, you say, well, rich people can't be saved. Sure. Abraham was filthy rich. All them old patriarchs in the Bible. Job, look what all he had. He had so much stuff. He, man, the Bible had to count it out for us. You know what? Because he was a righteous and an upright man and God blessed him. That's a promise. Amen. If you're saved and if you've got stuff, it all comes from God. But if you're unsaved and you have prospered, you've prospered through your own hands and it's only temporary. It will never, ever uh, carry you through eternal life. Second Chronicles chapter 26, 1. Uzziah, this young boy, was 16 years old when he was made king of Israel. Can you imagine? A 16-year-old being king of Israel. Can you imagine America having a 16-year-old president? I kind of wish you had one right now, don't you? Oh, I'm going to get in trouble on this one. Yep. Hey, it says a 16-year-old boy, and in verse 4 it says, As long as he sought the Lord... God made, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That's a promise. Seek God, you're prosperous. Psalms uh, uh, chapter 1. Let's talk about Psalms chapter 1 right quick. Well, I, I, this, this is a good chapter here to read. We'll just read a few verses here in Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. See the separation right there? Blessed if you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, but his delight is the law of the Lord, and his law, and in his, that's God's law, does he meditate day and night. Wow. This is a promise right here. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, they got palm trees down by the on the coast. And those roots of those palm trees, they grow deep, deep, deep. That's the way Christians' roots need to grow spiritually. They need to grow deep, deep, so deep. When God allows, amen. And the storms only come in a Christian's life if God allows them. And when the storms come and the hurricanes blow, I mean they'll bend. I'm, listen, I'm telling you, those palm trees are bend, and they'll, have you ever seen them? They, they, they just keep bending, and they, they'll bend, and, and, but they never break. Now, I don't say they never break, but I ain't never seen one broke. I've seen a limb, see a limb broke. But you know, the, the hurricanes, and they'll blow them palm trees way over. But you know why they don't break it? They don't be because they're rooted. They're grounded. God has them grounded. God has us grounded. And amen. When the storms pass over, guess what happens? Here they come. Right back up. I don't know if I can ever say that I've seen one palm tree that's been uprooted from a storm. Think about it. You know what we need to be? We need to be palm tree Christians. When God allows things to blow in our lives, amen, when God allows things to happen in our lives, just keep yourself grounded. Right here. In
in verse number 3, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's a promise from the good hands of people. And that ain't all state either. And then ain't that little lady, other little lady, Miss Flo. Flo, yeah. That's her name, Flo. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> brother, brother, brother. Uh -huh. Lord help me, I can't think of your name. She works for Miss Flo. Eh? Well, she sells for Miss Flo. She got a Flo doll on her desk. Amen. How many you got them? Two now? One or two? <laughs> Y'all see that new commercial? She got the ships, y'all in names of flow, flow this and flow that. And what's the name of What's that odd name she's got? Watch that commercial. That little boat out there. Y'all got to watch that <laughs> commercial about. What is that? Enterprise Insurance? Who is that? Progressive, yeah. Flow with Progressive. Then one fella had his boat named Grinch, not Grinch. She, oh, I thought that's funny. Y'all got to see that. Man. See, commercial sales. Amen. Especially those that you can remember. Uh, but it says, uh, And whatever you do shall prosper, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. You know what a lot of people think they do? They think they can hide from God. When nobody's home, kids are gone, Husband's gone, wife's gone, whoever the case be. Or they take a vacation, go off in a strange land, and all of a sudden they go to acting different. Ooh, something's wrong with that. I mean, listen, you, you ought to be what you are, where you are. Amen. But you know what? A lot of times when we're by ourselves, nobody's looking, we think we can hide from somebody. You can't hide from God. No, sir. God has an all-seeing eye watching you. And he said, verse number 6, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and there is blessings. Let me read the negative part. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. I'm glad God's got positives and, got, and, and backs them up with negatives. And then he got negatives and backs them up with positives, won't you? Yeah. You know, somebody said, Well, preacher, you ought not preach so negative. Well, you know my battery story. But I'm going to tell it for Marcia. She ain't been here. Have you ever seen a battery crank a car that had two positive posts? Never happened. Well, what about all negative? Well, two negatives crank, ne won't crank nothing, amen. You've got to have a positive and you've got to have a negative. Yes, sir. So I'm talking about standing on the, the promises. Hmm. We have a lot of promises we can stand on. I'm not naming promises. I'm just hitting on some things, amen, in everyday life that we occur. But I want to look at this final promise we can stand on. One of these days, it's all going to be consummated and all this worry is going to be over. Then where are we going to stand? I'm going to look at eternal life here just for a little while. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith into salvation. I'm talking about if you're saved, you're kept. You know what this word kept means? Guarded by God. Now you think you can lose what God? You think God can lose anything? I beg your pardon. Somebody says, Oh, you can lose your salvation. That ain't what God says. God says, Neither height nor depth. No, no principality. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And if He wrote your name down the Lamb Book of Life, He ain't made a mistake. He ain't in the, the writing business and the oops made a mistake business. He's not in that kind of business. That's the reason the Bible says here in in uh, 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 where did I say I was at? First Peter somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. First Peter chapter one verse five. Those who are kept, who are guarded by the power of God. Now, do you think Satan has more power than God? Absolutely not. If you're saved, we have the promise of a heavenly home. And we, now my body might not be guarded by God, but my soul is guarded by God. Now, my body is protected by my guardian angel that God sent. But my soul is protected. 
guarded. He walks up to the devil. He says, devil, you might can have his body, but you can't have his soul because I'm guarding that. The precious blood of my son purchased his soul on Calvary. Ain't nothing. That might not be good English, but ain't nothing, amen, can take that soul away from the price that my son Jesus paid for his soul. Because one day he realized he was a sinner. One day, under the power of the Holy Ghost, he said, God, I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. God, help me. I don't want to go to hell. Save my soul. And the Holy Ghost brings him to Jesus. And Jesus delivers him to God. And God saves that soul because Jesus died for that soul. You think the tomb of the unnamed soldier is guarded? He ain't guarded near like the guard that God gives His children. Amen. He has guarded. And that's a promise. Amen. I'm glad that's a promise. I'll find them in a minute. It says here, amen, that who are kept by or guarded by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Faith in what? The blood of Jesus and His work on Calvary's cross. Through faith. I'll find it back in a minute. I should have turned over now. I just got it written down. And, 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 and through faith, ready. Now, here's another point on, on, on everlasting life. Amen. Uh, uh, ready to re be revealed in the last time. Now, if you can lose your salvation, the devil can snatch it from you. God would no longer guard you. Neither would these verse says who are kept by the power of God through faith into salvation, ready to be re revealed in the last time. He, God says, I promise. Ain't that a good promise, folks? Woo! If we're saved, we have a promise. As, it, as the pianist comes in heaven of eternal joy, look what's in heaven. There's joy, there's peace, there's happiness. According to Revelation 21, there's no more death, there's no more sorrow, there's no more pain, there's no more night, there's no more curse. There's no more sun. How about that? Because the Bible said God's Son is going to be the light of the world. He's going to light. He's going to be the light. You know what that means? We ain't got no electricity bill. <laughs> you can go in the darkest place, amen, and there'll be light. Why? Because God's Son is lighting up the way. Or you talking about it. You talk about it. My, he'll put the nuclear plants to shame, amen. The Son, the blessed Son of Jesus. And Ephesians chapter 6, 13 says, Take ye the whole army. Now, now this will encourage us as we go out in these next few days. We've been saved. We know we're saved. We know God's guarding our soul. But He allows Satan to slip in our lives and trip us up. Here's what we've got to do. In Ephesians 6, 13, Take the whole armor of God. You need to read chapter, Ephesians chapter 6 to really get the whole meaning. I'm going to cut it short. Take the whole armor of God. In other words, like the gladiators. I mean, listen. They have armor for everywhere except their back. You know why? You don't turn on God. You face the enemy. You don't run from the enemy. You face the enemy. And he said, take on it. To take on Satan, you've got to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And having done all to stand, stand. And then it says in chapter Ephesians 5 5, it says, No whoremongers, no unclean persons, no covetous man, no idolater, have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. You know what the promise is? It's going to be a perfect place. It's going to be a perfect environment. It's going to be a perfect people. It's going to be so it's full of perfection. Amen. That we'll say, my, my, why didn't God call us on out of here sooner? That's a promise we can stand on, folks. Let's stand our feet. Amen. If anyone 
There could be someone here that's never been saved. Says, oh, I made a profession, but I don't know if I really mean it. Listen, don't make another one unless God showed you you're lost. Just pray about it, amen. <laughs> you can say, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, Lord, save me, all you want. He won't save you unless you, God the Holy Ghost show, shows you that you're a sinner. You can stand under a carport and say, I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car, all day, but that don't mean you're a car. It's got to be a, I can't think of the word, one of these toys, transformation, amen. It's got to be a Holy Ghost transformation to pass from death unto life. All these promises we can stand on because God is so good to us. Let's sing that chorus. Speak it up a little bit. I surrender all. What'd you do it this morning? I surrender all. And all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. Just give you a little encouragement this week as you go out to your jobs. Out face the devil, amen. We have some promises we can stand on. All right, tonight, five o'clock. Amen. We'll come right back, start it all over, amen.